Mission impossible. That's how one analyst has described the reform process now taking place in Ukraine, according to which the government is trying to reboot the economy and throw off the legacy of the Soviet era. It's an understatement to say that it's not an easy task. Kenneth Raposa, emerging markets specialist writing for Forbes, will tell us more here on The Press Review. He says, in their own words, the Ukrainian government has undertaken an impossible mission to reform an old Soviet-style economy and make it more European. It also means reforming an economy that Ukrainian political leaders have promised to fix since the fall of the Soviet Union back in 1991. If the new leaders are to be trusted, then this time it's for real. Since Russia annexed Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula in March 2014, and the Kremlin-backed insurgency began shortly after in East Ukraine, inflation has jumped significantly and living standards have dropped, with the economy expected to shrink this year by 8%. Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Raposa thinks there is. The good news is Ukraine's government seems serious about turning Ukraine into a new Poland. That is particularly the case in Kiev. But to move westward requires a de-oligarchization of Ukraine's economy. It requires transparency and business rules that investors can understand. Fair play is a unique concept in Ukraine. Bribery is rampant. As ever then, with Ukraine, it's a mixed picture. The politicians seem to be making the right noises and international organizations have encouraging words to say. But on the ground, it's the same old problems. Corruption, bribe-taking and bribe-giving and bureaucracy. Ukraine's political leaders have work to do to convince voters the country is on the right track. Raposa elaborates. Moving westward depends less on the geopolitical strategy of Russia, more on the Ukrainian voter. That's where the Mission Impossible theme comes in. This is not a young demographic. Older Ukrainians remember socialism. Ukraine needs investment to attract young entrepreneurs and keep them here. Ukraine's jet-setting elite may have plans to become the next Poland, but it all depends on the locals, some of which are just as willing to lean east. Since the Soviet Union fell and Ukraine became independent, trade with Russia has remained integral to the Ukrainian economy. The process now of turning from east to west has been described by many as a divorce. Kiev is trying to increase trade with the EU and stop its dependence on Russian gas. What Ukraine needs to do now is deliver results to its citizens so that they'll be convinced that the country is doing the right thing. That's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow for another press review. In Kiev, this is Ukraine Today.